Did I scare you? It was my mouse ears, wasn't it? I'm sorry, I had to do it. I mean, it is a Halloween video. I'm festive today. Mouse ears and a pumpkin. See that? And it's gold and sparkly. <laughs> Along with my, my spring floral arrangement. Can you guess what I have for Halloween? That's right. I'm Mean Girls. I'm so many Mean Girl quotes and so little time. Hello everyone, I am back with another Pinterest hacks video and this time we are doing Halloween edition. <laughs> So I scoured Pinterest for a couple of hours and I found a couple of cool hacks that I want to share with you guys and let you know how they turned out because some were good and some were like, I don't know. So without further ado, let's get into the Pinterest hacks. So the first Pinterest hack is dyeing your tights a different color using grocery store items. The ones I found online include Jello powder, food coloring and Kool-Aid. So I decided to test them out and see if it actually worked because I think it'd be really cool to dye pantyhose like blue if you want to be like a smurf or a What are those things called, Chris? Those blue uh, animated dudes? Not smurfs? No, not smurfs. It's a movie. It's a fairly recent movie, like in the last couple of years. Ah, Avatar, thank you. So I decided to put this act to the test. And so I got a pair of pantyhose and that took some time because there are very specific directions on the kinds of pantyhose you should be using. These pantyhose need to be a lighter color because that's going to make the color adhere to it better and it's gonna show up a little bit brighter. And then number two, they need to be sheer but not fully sheer, like semi sheer if you can. And then third is they need to be, that's two. Three, this is three. They need to be as close to completely 100% nylon as possible. Like not a lot of other like ingredients going on there. So I finally found some and they weren't what I was expecting because the only thing I could find were like the little short, I don't know, the pant sock, trouser sock. I don't wear them. They're these dealies. So what I decided to do was dye them green because I think that would look so cool to be a witch. And um, so I decided to use Jello this time. And I also have food coloring as well because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in the end. So all you need to do is boil a whole bunch of water, dump in a packet of Jello. I bought a couple of packages because I just wasn't sure what the color would be when it turned out. Um, so I bought blue, I bought the green obviously, and then I wanted to like mix them if I needed to in order to get the color I wanted. But when I put in one pack of Jello, by the way, look at it like bubbling over. It looks very like witchy brew, you know? It seemed pretty green to me so I was like this is fine so all you do is turn it down to medium and then throw in the pantyhose and use a plastic spoon and make sure the spoon is smooth you don't want you know anything to catch on the pantyhose because that would be super annoying to spend all your time dyeing these pantyhose and then they're ripped and you're like oh I can't even wear them and then you throw them in and you start stirring keep stirring as often as you possibly can I did every like two minutes or so because you want to make sure that all of the folds and everything get evenly dyed, if that makes sense, so you don't end up with any um, chunks or saturations of color in one particular spot. And quite honestly, it was like maybe 15 minutes, and this is the color that they turned out being. I was just like, mm, not impressed. And instead of opening up a whole other packet of jello and throwing that in, like, because that's a lot of jello. It's a lot of jello. I decided to just mix up a bunch of the different hacks and I added in some food coloring. So I added in some green and some blue food coloring into the jello mixture and was stirring it around. Probably close to like five or six drops of the green and then two to three drops of the blue. So once I got it to the color that I wanted, I drained the pantyhose, rinsed them under cold water until I got all the color saturation out just so it's like running clear if that makes sense and then laid them over a hanger to dry and this is the color that I got like when it's all said and done and dry like a look at that that's pretty good overall this hack with a couple of minor changes that I made to it was a big win. For hack number two, I decided to test out a different way of carving pumpkins. Now, carving pumpkins is something that we do as like a family, as a tradition on my side of the family, and we always get together and carve pumpkins together. Um, and I decided to try something that would be a lot faster. So, one of the hacks that I found was to take a cookie cutter and you like mallet you like hammer it into the pumpkin and then you get like a cool carving out of the pumpkin for like zero effort. I was like, yes! Sign me up for that. So I got a whole bunch of different Halloween-y kind of um, cookie cutters from the bulk barn. And so I decided to try it out with a bat and um, like not like a swinging bat, 
but like that probably would have worked too actually. The animal bat and I put it against the pumpkin and I started to I started to hammer it in and I didn't know what I was doing because I was scared I was gonna cave in the pumpkin or it wouldn't like it would just not work well so I'm like gently tapping I'm like I don't know what I'm doing and so Chris took over and actually did it and it actually worked fairly well. You still need to put some effort into actually hammering it in all the way through and you need to make sure that the pumpkin is carved quite thin if that makes sense um, just so that the actual cookie cutter can go all the way through and the final result like you can see the outline of the bat and I think it looks really awesome and I think this would be really cool if you had like a circle cookie cutter as well so you could do like polka dots and like bats and I think bigger cookie cutters would be really cool too I think I don't know like patterns and stuff that would be really fun right so if you really like pumpkin carvings and sort of the effect but don't want to put in the effort this is a much better option for you thumbs up for number three it actually involves a wig you know when you get them and they're super shiny and fake looking and just like Mm, not super impressive even though especially from like Halloween stores they are so ridiculously expensive like what what makes you think you could charge this much money for this wig don't understand but anyway I got one from Walmart for like five bucks this is the one I ended up getting it's this bright blue one I'll show you guys in the natural light so you can see what it actually looks like and the amount of shine that's in it but there is a hack online that says that you can counteract that shininess and make it look less fake looking and it'll make it look a lot softer and more natural if you can make a blue wig natural so anyway I decided to test it out for you guys so what you need to do is you need a bucket you need your wig and you need some fabric softener they didn't specify which kind so I just grabbed the one that was on sale and you turn the wig inside out throw it into a bucket and dump in they say a cup of fabric softener it is a fairly large wig so I dumped in a little bit more than that and then you just kind of smush it around with your hand until it's all covered and you're supposed to leave it there for like five days is a long time so that's where it is right now to be quite honest with you all it's still soaking and it's not done yet but through the magic of editing I will now hello everyone so I just rinsed it thoroughly and this is what it looks like basically the same there is no difference in terms of the level of shine the level of shine is exactly the same if anything now it just smells really really strongly like fabric softener which is not exactly what you want when you're going out for Halloween so now what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna add a little bit of just this is just cornstarch like just baby powder stuff because apparently the person like added a bit of that to it as well and see if that makes any sort of a difference which I assume it will but like overall I'm not super impressed So you can see that the baby powder does kind of minimize the shine a little bit versus before, but not significantly. You'd have to add a lot and it would take a lot of work to kind of like work the product in. So overall, I'm going to say that this was a giant fail. Number four is a baking hack and it's using one of those sort of like surprise inside sort of methods. And when you cut into the cake, you're supposed to be able to see this beautiful orange pumpkin in the middle. So for this recipe, they use a couple of different box cakes. Um, they used a pound cake, a spice cake, and then food coloring. That was it. And I couldn't find pound cake or spice cake in a box. I don't know if they exist anymore, but they don't exist where I am from. So what I ended up using is a yellow cake or a white cake and a chocolate cake because I thought if I dyed the cake, the yellow cake orange and then had that against the black of the chocolate cake, I thought like orange and black is very Halloween, you know what I'm saying? What I ended up doing actually is combining and sort of making the white cake more of a, like a pumpkin-y spice cake. So I kind of DIY'd some stuff. And so I threw in the white cake mix about half a can of pumpkin, three eggs, and then a bunch of spices. So I added some cinnamon, some nutmeg, and a little, little bit of ginger. Blend it all up and then add in whatever food coloring you want. It is fairly orange, but I wanted to make it like super orange. So I added in some red and some yellow food coloring into it as well. And once you're happy with the color, pour it into the loaf pan and bake it. Once the cake is cooled down, you're gonna start cutting it into little sections. And I measured about the width of the cookie cutter itself. And then once all the pieces are all cut up, you just sort of cookie cutter the pumpkin into it. I used at the very bottom of the cake and cookie cutter there. So once you have all of your little cookie cutter bits in the center of the loaf pan, then you're gonna make your chocolate cake mix as per the directions. I covered the pumpkin completely on all sides and then put it in the oven to bake. Now, this is where it got a little bit dicey because the sides of the pumpkin were getting cooked a lot faster than the top 
of the cake. And the grand reveal, did it work? Drum roll. You did a pretty good job. I have to say I'm kind of impressed and I love the bright pop of orange against the dark chocolate cake. I think it looks so cool. By the way, that pumpkin spice cake is delicious. We had all like the leftover bits and I'm like eating, I'm like, om, nom, 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 nom. So there were a little bit of issues with it just in terms of the actual baking process and you know, some parts getting too cooked and some parts not getting cooked enough. But overall it did taste very good and I like the chocolate with the pumpkin and the creamy icing. I think a cream cheese frosting would be really good too. But like overall I think this is like a really fun recipe that you could play around with and certainly worth experimenting with. And then number five is using fishnet stuff stockings to create sort of a cool scale like effect for makeup say if you wanted to be like a mermaid or a fish or something along those lines so what I did is I bought some fishnet stocking things where did I put them they fell on the floor Ugh. Got him. So the whole thing behind it is you're supposed to chop off a chunk of it, stick it to your face, and then use a brush to kind of brush on whatever colors that you want, and then you get this cool, like, scale-like effect. So for me, I really like it better when you apply some sort of a base down first. Like if you take the NYX um, Jumbo Pencil in Milk, which is a classic, and put like a really thin layer of that on first, and then put on your your powder shadows, I think it looks a lot better. And then when you pull it off, it actually does look kind of cool, right? Like you have this cool sort of gradient effect and I think it'd be cool if you added sparkles to it, you did different colors, and I just think it's a really cool effect. And that's everything for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like these sort of Pinteresty hack videos. And if you have any requests for future upcoming ones, leave them in the comment section below. And also let me know what you are going for for Halloween and if you have any of your uh, Halloween outfits picked out or maybe like your favorite costume that you've done in the past maybe I don't know something like that I really want to hear what you guys are doing and I hope you guys are having an amazing week I will talk to you all in my next video love you girls Mwah.